Welcome back to the rest of the story. I'm going to give you guys a quick update, the last update on these bottle calves from me. Probably until we go through and wean them out of here because there's not much to talk about anymore, at least for this group of calves. Now, everybody's eating grain, everybody, well, everybody's been grain, uh, fed their bottle, and been bedded down. You can tell they get kind of spastic like that when they got fresh bedding. Um, they are going through, they eat it like, well, they're eating it for roughage is what they're doing. Uh, we're not really set up, or nor are we really set up for uh, giving them hay. Uh, my grandpa never gave them hay. Um, I never really gave bottle calves hay, um, especially when they can eat it. They're straw bedding for roughage, too. Um, straw is something that we are going through fairly quick. Not so much that they're eating it. Um, we went through a lot early on because it was so hot and humid and muggy out is that it was making these guys so wet by the end of the day that we went through to feed them at night. We ended up having to give them a little bit more bedding than what we would typically. Like right now, I think I used a bale and a half to bed everybody down, and there's 27 in here right now. This barn is set up for, I think, comfortably holding about 60. I had 68 in here at, a time, at the last time that I had this barn full full. But to do that, I had a special setup of uh, wire panels. I had, I think, eight right in the walkway here. Um, these guys are not veal calves, anybody that's wondering. Anybody that's new to the channel, these guys are going to be fat cattle, fat calves. Um, they are chained up right now, but they are on the tail end of that trip. And... And... Um, they're going to be weaned off here really quick here, as in less than a month. Uh, we're going to go through. They haven't had any of their shots yet, other than the one shot they got when they got when they got brought in. Um, the vet's going to come down. He's going to put them to sleep. No, not to hurt them, not to be mean. Oh, yeah, maybe kind of a little bit. Well, I'd be kind of aggressive, too, if I woke up like that. But um, He's going to put them to sleep. He's just going to give them a shot. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go through dehorn them, we're going to castrate them, probably knife cut them. It's cold enough out, we can get away with it. Knife cutting is preferred, seems how it's a guaranteed way that you, you got both of their testicles. Um, we're also going to go through and vaccinate them and give them their ear tags. Uh, the reason we don't do any of that before we, or right, right when we first get them in the barn, oh, you guys were actually looking at me. Um, is because we don't want to add any more stress to these guys, and we absolutely have to when we get them. Um, for that exact reason, Holsteins do not handle stress very well uh, at all. I mean, beef cattle seem like they're oh, they're pretty sturdy. Holsteins, uh, a good strong wind, and they, they fall over. Uh, oh, I want to address this really quick. I was asked about our grain hangers here. Um, somebody that did notice in a previous video, I do have a bunch hanging up here. Ideally, I was heading towards, or was aiming towards having a hanger for each bottle calf. Uh, they're about 20 bucks a piece, and that does get pricey when you start buying a few at a time. Um, so gradually, I'm adding to the barn if we keep doing bottle calves here. Uh, these guys are going to get weaned out. We'll get them out in the lot, out on grass and get them going on grain and hay and everything else. They'll be all nice and happy. Um, the barn's going to sit empty and um, hopefully get going through its harvest here. Um, but the reason or where these are actually ha uh, hung is strategically hung. Um, you can see that they're actually right above the bottle feeders. So what happens is, is when you feed the calves from the manger, the bottle comes out right here. And when they're done getting their milk, okay, um, they want to keep sucking. So what they do is they reach up and they start sucking on this, and it shoves grain down their throat, gets them started on grain a little bit quicker than going through with a bottle. That is my opinion. Uh, the big drawback to it, I'm not af really afraid to say it, um, is that when you get a calf growing for the first two months of its life, really not accustomed to eating out of a bucket, or used to a bucket. Uh, what happens is, is that when you wean them off, they can be awfully dumb. So, what you do is that, 
ideally if you're raising calves continuously or if you did have a couple small calves or something or beef calves or whatever just for argument's sake let's say that we already had some calves out in the lot um, ideally you would already have a calf or two similar in size or like what grandpa used to do um, we would constantly shift rotate cattle around the farms as they were as they got bigger like say from here they went over to the hog house in the hog house they'd stay for a couple months and when they started to get too big we'd move them out to the steer lot and then what would happen is is that the small calves that were in the hog house um, as we were bringing in new calves such as these guys they would kind of have let's just say they're an older brother or sister um, to get them going good and show them kind of like an instructor to show them how to drink where to go for grain where to sleep uh, works out really good if you can get a nice rotation like that going uh, we aren't going to have any calves right behind these guys Holstein calves right now are from what I was told I haven't checked any of the markets I was told that they're running about 35 bucks for a good quality Holstein calf a good quality Holstein calf at the local sales barn is a approximately 100 pounds I don't really like buying them much less than 95 um, it really does seem like when they're under 90 pounds you run into issues on top of issues on top of issues as you can see they're not bawling they're pretty content they're chewing their there is some grass in that straw too sorry getting a little bit of benefit from that um, but what grandpa always said is that if they're He's not liking the cats. Um, what Grandpa always used to say is, if they're bawling, they're not growing. Because if they're bawling, they're hungry, or they need water, or bedding, or something. So that is a good rule of thumb to go by. Holsteins aren't a big part of this farm anymore. Back when I was in college, um, I started raising Holstein calves myself when I was about 17. Started off with three um, went from there went down to the barn that is currently down at my place it had all the dairy equipment still in it and while I was still in high school I went through cleaned out all the dairy stuff all the dairy equipment got rid of that set the barn up with calf stalls and they were my biggest mistake one of two well biggest mistake and then I had an issue um, the biggest mistake was the fact that I used wood plywood uh, pieces of plywood to make my calf stalls and the problem is the wood being porous like it is when you're bringing calves in from the sales barn or at the time I was buying them from a local farmer you're bringing in bugs wherever else from a different farm they like to hide away in those pores or whatever on the in the wood and the problem is I would go through and clean it out and bleach it and it just didn't quite do the job and the first group of calves I ran through there I did 32 great success I didn't lose a single one I mean practically sleeping in the barn with them you know because when you're young you don't have a whole lot of money to work with so I um, was really determined to make sure everybody made it and my issue started to come through with the second group of calves when they were young they were their immune systems weren't as sturdy as they'd be if they were a couple weeks older and I started to have health issues a second issue I had or the first issue um, was the fact that that barn really didn't provide much for ventilation I should have had probably like six fans in the windows of that barn just to keep the air running um, young didn't really know the ins and outs of what it would take to raise bottle calves at the time and I eventually got away from that barn did do calf hutches for a little bit but decided to get away from calves altogether and I started raising well I focused more on my beef herd at the time um, we're back to this barn is set up ten times better than the one down at home I mean I could probably give you a quick run through the barn but there's not much to see everybody's really interested in it though so as far as bottle calves go 
once these guys are out of here, this barn's going to sit empty for a little bit. Depending on what calf prices do throughout the winter and where everybody stands, if we're going to go ahead and raise some more bottle calves, then we probably will. I mean, it's a little bit more justifiable when they're even 50 bucks. Oh, 50 bucks or even under 100 bucks. When you start paying 150 to 200 bucks for a bottle calf and you start having health issues and you start losing one or two, it takes it takes some money to get them going. Or it takes some money from the other calves that made it to recoup your losses. And these guys, they'll be gone about next spring. We're gonna, by the time we have them out of here, which I'm gonna say probably three weeks, get them started good. Uh, we aim for eight weeks overall. Um, we'll put them out, get them going on grain and hay, and keep them happy, keep them dry, keep them warm throughout the winter. And I'm gonna paint a pretty large, I'll give myself a pretty large area and say anywhere from March to May, these guys will be out of here. <clears throat> out of here, we'll end up selling them as feeder calves. Because anything north of five, 600 pounds, it does take a lot of grain to get them going, um, to get them up to finished weight. So, all right, guys, the cats are chasing me around, but I think it's time to call it the night. So thanks for watching. Take care. Take it easy. Keep in touch, and I'll talk to you guys later.